What if the worst person you knew could change the world? To start this off, we're going to play a little game I've made up called Bible Character or Not. Sound good? Well, if you don't care, we're going to do it anyways. Uh, first one is, is, this man was a teacher, a speaker, an author. He loved putting people in prison that didn't believe the same thing that he did. It didn't matter if they were men or women. He'd go house to house, and he was even okay with murdering them. So, Bible character or not? It's actually a Bible character. So, it's actually the Apostle Paul. He's responsible for bringing Jesus to the Gentiles, writing the majority of the New Testament. If you're not familiar, you can find this starting to light off in Acts 8. All right, next one. This man saw a foreigner beating up a local man. He felt something welling up inside of him, rage probably. He wanted to make a plan to do something, to make that foreign man pay. So he decided that he was going to beat him up when he was done. Looks around, checks that the coast is clear, proceeds to beat up the foreigner until he's dead. Then he hides the body. Bible character or not? Shocking. Bible character. <laughs> Moses. Crazy, right? If you're not aware, he's responsible for bringing Israel out of slavery, the Ten Commandments, and most of the early religious system comes from this man. Scripture, I pulled this out just so in case you think I'm a liar, is Exodus 2, verse 11 through 12. All right, next one. This man is the most powerful man in the world at the time. He sees his neighbor bathing through a window, and he decides he'd like to get to know her. <laughs> just trying to keep this PC. They end up having relations. She becomes pregnant. All the time, he knows she's married. And he wanted to cover it up because he's, you know, a powerful guy, doesn't want to get caught. So he sends her husband into battle, and he ends up dying. Bible character or not? Some of you might know that one. That's actually King David, known for a lot of psalms, also known to be the man after God's own heart, which blows my mind if you just re play back what I just said. And he's also the king of Israel. If you want to find that story, it's 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 2 through 17. Okay, last one. Leader makes an amazing income, puts him to the top society financially. He wants for nothing. Huge home, travel, power, influence, the dream, right? A wife, baby on the way. But because he's so successful, he's full of pride. He needs one more conquest in life, right? He sees a girl in town that everybody wants to go after, and he goes, I bet she'd like me more than anybody else because I'm the man. Starts talking to the girl. She ends up liking him. He commits adultery, and his life begins to disintegrate. Bible character or not? Well, sadly, that's not a Bible character. That's a little bit of a story about my life, right? So I think it's so easy sometimes to look at Bible characters just so far away, but the stuff that we encounter every day in our lives, God uses in a story. I want you to stop and look around the room. I want you to look in the mirror. We're in a Bible story right now, right? And I have a shocking challenge for you today. Part of the life change that God wants you to see comes from Christians getting into people's lives. I think so much of the time we sit and hear a sermon or we read a scripture and think that that's somebody else's problem. Hey, Sammy, I found another one. You should probably talk to him, <laughs> right? But guess what? He made us the light and the darkness. He made us the salt of the earth. If God thought Moses and Paul and David and me were too far away from him, all of our stories would look very different. Why do you think that we're allowed to decide who's too far or who's too close? Right? So hopefully paint a little better picture. Uh, to show some encouragement, we're going to jump into uh, back to the Apostle Paul, if you don't remember. He was a murderer. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23, and this is the message version. It is, blows my mind. Even though I'm free of the demands and expectations of everyone, I have voluntarily become a servant to any and all in order to reach a wide range of people. Notice he didn't say a few people or maybe this other guy. He said all. Religious, non-religious, meticulous moralist, loose living and moralist, the defeated, the demoralized, whoever. It didn't, and, and, and he said, I didn't take on their way of life. I kept my bearing in Christ, but I entered their world to try to experience things from their point of view. What a shock. I've, I've become just about every sort of servant there is in attempts to lead those I met into a God-saved lives. I did all this because of the message. I didn't just want to talk about it. I wanted to be 
in on it. Most people don't know, Josh Wang decided to come into this narcissist's daughter's life and sit in the mess with me. He didn't join in on my values. He brought his light into my darkness. The gift you've been given from God is not something to squander or keep to yourself. It's something to be shared. 99% of the time, guess what? You're not going to be quoting Bible verses at somebody or sending them a book to read. You're going to live life with them. Close your eyes and dream with me for a minute. Imagine what could happen if we do this. Imagine if the person that you knew that has oppressed people their whole lives could set a nation free. What if a rich man could become the greatest servant that a generation's ever known? What if a criminal could become a king? What if the lost could be found? What if a drug addict could become a doctor? We serve a God that can do anything. Step into the boldness that he's blessed you with and take a leap of faith. He's called you to and get in the mess. Now listen, the application's real simple. I'm going to say it three times so you can remember it. I want you to write down a name. I want you to pray for them. I want, to, I want you to ask God for an opportunity to get in their lives. And then I want you to do something for them. Oh, wait, that's the shortest application ever. It's literally that simple. There are people all around you. Write down a name. Pray for them. Ask God for an opportunity to be a light in their darkness and do something for them. One more time. Write down a name. Pray for them. Ask God for an opportunity and do something in their lives.